Hey there y'all, welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy and I'm so excited to paint with you today. Today we're going to do another page in our watercolor journals and today is going to be a swatch and doodle kind of day. So we are going to use our watercolor paints and then I'm also going to bring in a micron pen or um, just an archival ink pen. Uh, any brand will do. Um, but I'm going to be using a Micron uh, 03 uh, size, so you can see the tip on that. It's a little tiny. Um, and we are just going to play with some colors, some swatches, and then do some doodling on top with basically just patterns and shapes, nothing specific. Sometimes you just have to swatch and doodle. Okay, so for colors today, I think I am going to stick with blues and greens. Now I am running really low on my sap green and I ordered some and they sent me the wrong thing. So I had to order more. Uh, so let's mix some greens. Let's talk about mixing greens. Um, depending on the types of blues that you choose and yellows. So to start from the very beginning, if you're not sure, blue and yellow mixed together, create green. So blue and yellow um, are considered primary colors and then green is a secondary color. Secondary color is what you get when you mix two primary colors together. So let's mix a couple of different greens and um, we'll do that by mixing different types of yellows and blues and you can see you'll get different types of greens. So this is ultramarine and ultramarine is a warm toned blue and then we will mix it with a warm toned yellow. So this is diralide yellow these are both warm tones and what I'm going to get is not going to look very, very green at all. It's going to be very olive -y, like an olive green, um, a very rustic neutral green, gray green, if you will. So it's still going to be green and I guess we can swatch these out. You know, let's swatch these out. I'm going to do circles and then to the mixed color. So look at that. It is green, but it's very gray. So that's ultramarine, a warm blue and diorolite yellow, a warm yellow mixed together. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drop in some bits of color from the two colors that I mixed in just wet on wet. So there's some yellow and to the other side, drop in a little tidbits of blue. Beautiful. Okay. So that was a very gray green. So two warm, a blue, warm blue and a warm yellow make a very gray green. And there are reasons for that. I'm not going to get into all of it right now, but because they are warmer colors, they have more red undertones to them. And red is the opposite on the color wheel of green. So therefore it neutralizes it. Go watch my color mixing video if you want to learn more about that. Um, okay. So let's get into phthalo. Phthalo is a very cool blue. So this is phthalo blue very cyan color, turquoisey color. And I'm also going to use this um, diorolide yellow again. So a warm yellow. So this we get like definitely a more traditional green. It's a little brighter, a little more vibrant. Let's start this down here. And then I am going to add, like I did before, little touches of the initial color that I used to mix these together. Because why not? There we go. Okay, so let's move on. Let's do phthalo again. 
And we're gonna add a touch of cadmium yellow, which is a little bit cooler in temperature. And it's gonna give you a much brighter, look at this, bright, bright, almost neon green. These are both cool colors, a cool yellow, a cool blue. We're gonna get something more like this, look at that. And then touches of our initial color to it because why not? Let's, okay, so we did that. Let's go into some other like more unusual blues and yellows and see what we get. So the quality of the primary colors that you use or the qualities, whether they're warm or cool or um, more neutral, all depend, all will change the effect of the type of green you get. So that's just important when you start to experiment mixing colors. So I'm gonna use this um, cobalt teal blue color. So this is a very cool color. It's got a lot of greenish undertones to it already and let's mix it with this yellow and look at that you're gonna get like super bright green so these are much more earth toned these are more neon and now let's add some warmer yellow to this and see what happens. So this yellow has some green undertones to it. And look what happens. We get more of an earth toned warmer color. I forgot what colors I used for this. Just a little bit of that cobalt teal. I'm gonna put some of this warmer yellow in here. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. And this one I use, the cadmium yellow and the cobalt teal. And just letting those dry. Do their wet on wet thing. All right, let's do one more at least, because then we want to get into the doodling part of this, which will be a lot of fun. Um, let me clean out one of these spaces. Now I'm going to go for a very not yellow yellow, but like this wheat brown color. It still could be considered on the yellow spectrum but it's very neutral very earth toned this is raw sienna and let's add i have no i've never mixed these two colors together i don't think so but this is cerulean no this is yes this is cerulean which is like a gray blue i have a feeling we're going to get a very gray toned green yep so similar to this one up here, but because I use the cerulean and raw sienna, um, I don't think it's gonna separate as much. So this one, uh, ultramarine is a granulating color, which just means some of the, uh, what they use to make the actual color itself, they're very heavy. And as things dry, they, they separate a little bit. They, make um have a granular texture so another very earth toned green and let's see what would happen if we add ultramarine to this we're just going to start mixing in colors that's like a very blue gray that's almost like totally neutral that wouldn't even 
register on my green scale necessarily. I just want to fill up the rest of this page. And let's just add phthalo to it. And some of this yellow. And some cerulean. I'm just adding all the colors now. <laughs> and or um sorry, that wasn't that was cobalt teal. So now we have this very kind of thick. This is just all the colors added together. That's quite a lovely shade of green. And while those are still kind of wet, let's drop in some of the base colors that we used. This one I got a little carried away. Can't even see the green underneath anymore. But that's okay. All right, so let's let those dry and then we'll come back and do some doodling on top. Okay, we're back and everything is dry on the page here, but I have pulled out a couple of different pens. So this is a Micron pen. This is a popular brand. You can find a link to it in the description. Um, this is a 0.3 size, um, which is a nice fine tip. But I've also pulled in some different sizes, which I had in a different brand. So this is Artist Loft. This is by Michaels, their store brand. Um, Michaels is a local um, chain um, to where I live, art store. And this is a 0.5, so it's a little bit bigger of a t point. And then I also pulled out a brush pen. Um, so this is, um, can paint, paint, can draw uh, thicker and thinner lines um, and has just a little more ink. So we'll use these in combination to make our uh, doodles on top. So these looked lovely. They dried really fun. They look like little orbs of planet type things uh, with all of these different greens and blues and yellows. So I am just going to go through and use dots, dashes, and lines to make different patterns. And this can be really um, just combining the same few elements. So let's do uh, dashes on this one. So dashes, just a short line and how you combine them with each other can really change the tone and feel. So I'm going to do these. Let me make sure you can see this. Let me change the angle a little bit. Okay. So we're a little more zoomed in there so you can see a little bit more what I'm actually doing. So I'm just going around in a circle, creating these little dashes. And this can be when you're using very simple elements and the only decisions you have to, you've taken a lot of choice out. You've decided I'm using dots, dashes, and lines. Um, and you'll see what I mean by lines. Um, you take a lot of the hemming and hawing over what to put on top. We're not doing florals or flowers. We don't have to do anything specific. Dots, dashes, and lines and how we combine them. So the choices are how do you combine them with each other to make things look different. So that is our first one. Um, and you could add additional elements into the middle. Like I could go in and put like dots in the middle. Or I could have done more dash lines, but I just put dots in the middle. Okay. One down, several to go. Uh, let's change to, let's see, let's do the brush pen. 
and let's do some lines and dots. So this is feeling very, let's see how, so the brush pen you can get pretty, actually, you know what? I've changed my mind. We're gonna do lines with this first and then I'm gonna go back and do the dots. So this is feeling very otherworldly to me. So I'm just gonna put on a series of lines that squiggle kind of all the way around and almost look like they're coming off like the rings of Saturn, kind of. There we go. And now I'm going to add dots to it, but I'm gonna use the brush pen so they can be a little bit thicker without having to With the other pen, it would have been a lot of coloring to get a, enough ink to make these darker. There we go. There's another one. And you could do something similar here. I'll switch to my 0.5 and you can do this all with the same pen. I just happen to have these ones. So I am gonna do some really close lines here, close together. And now it's made this look like, I don't know. And then you can also, um, let's see, I'm gonna do circles. Oh, I said I was only gonna do dots, dashes, and lines, so I can't do circles. So I'm gonna save that for another time. So I'm gonna put dots below, technically I could make a circle with a line, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay true to my original intention. I'm just gonna fill the whole bottom here. And let's, we'll just leave that one the way it is. You can even have the dots kind of go off. All right, so now we can move on to the next one. Um, let's do some more with some vertical shapes. So what about um, a combination of, we'll go this way. So we're gonna do some lines vertically, but then I'm gonna start to break it up into dashes. And then those dashes, let's add a few more lines over here. And those dashes are even gonna get smaller and smaller until they are dots. There we go. So that one was fun. Let's keep going. Um, all right, I want to do some thicker dashes, I think, with this. So we are going to do some, hmm, I'm going to do a line this way. And I'm gonna make it thicker and then thinner and then thicker. So that's fun. And then I'm gonna do some dashes this way. But not fill the whole thing. There we go, that's fun. 
All right, I'm going to take this line way off the circle. We're going to make it a super curvy line. And then we're going to play with lines in the other direction. And we're going to do some dashes. You can see these are much thicker um, because I'm using the brush pen so I can get a lot more um, interesting kind of thin and thickness. And they can even be tapered, like thicker at one end and thinner at the other. There we go. Uh, let's switch back to this one. And we're going to cut you in half. There we go. And then Just making some of these gradually bigger. It almost looks like like a beaded curtain. Kind of blowing in the wind. Perfect. And then our last one, I'm going to do this one. I just thought of, I just want to do a bunch of vertical lines of varying heights. the way across. Mm, I actually like that. Very simple. Do we want to do any from the top? I guess so. Very nice. All right, so there are our swatches and doodles. We learned a lot about mixing greens today and got a little doodling practice in with some dots, dashes, and lines. We used uh, a couple of different types of pens, um, different thicknesses, and yeah. So all of the supplies and materials will be, or something similar will be in the description. I used my Core QOR by Golden Watercolor Paints. I'm working in my Baohong sketchbook. Um, and I used a Micron and then Artist Loft pens. Uh, so thank you so much for joining me today. A super thanks to my super thanks um, contributors. Uh, you know who you are. You had a great week this week. Thank you so much. I cannot do this without y'all and your support. Thank you all to all of you who watch um, regularly and come back and comment. You are fabulous. But thank you so much, and I will see you for the next Watercolor Journal page very soon. Take care, y'all. Happy painting.